Rome Report comes to you from the Department of Social Communications, Catholic Archdiocese of Accra. This and every Sunday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. on GTV. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Coming up in today's show, Pope Francis prays for the Catholics in China. Jesuit Superior General remembers his predecessor, Aldolfo Nicolás, who died in Japan. We present the Map of Hope, explaining what it is and how it can help you. All this and much more here on Rome Reports. The Pope prayed the Regina Celi from the Library of the Apostolic Palace. He meditated on the Feast of the Ascension, saying it's an invitation to evangelize and demonstrate how to follow Jesus. First and foremost, he stressed, is the importance of a good example. Di fronte a un compito così impegnativo e pensando alle nostre debolezze, ci sentiamo inadeguati, come di certo si sentirono anche gli apostoli stessi. Ma non bisogna scoraggiarsi, ricordando le parole che Gesù ha rivolto a loro prima di ascendere al cielo. Io sono con voi tutti i giorni fino alla fine del mondo. The Pope also sent a message to Catholics in China. In 2007, Benedict XVI asked that every May 24th, on the Feast of Mary, Help of Christians, Catholics pray for their brothers and sisters in China. Desidero assicurarvi che la Chiesa Universale, di cui siete parte integrante, condivide le vostre speranze e vi sostiene nelle prove della vita. He also entrusted the Blessed Mother to those who are working for peace and dialogue between nations. Before leaving, he announced a year of reflection on the encyclical Laudato Si. It just celebrated its fifth anniversary. Invito tutte le persone di buona volontà ad aderire per prendere cura della nostra casa comune e dei nostri fratelli e sorelle più fragili. Although the Pope prayed from his library, he later leaned out the window to bless the pilgrims who were in the square. For months, it had been completely empty due to the pandemic. Now, little by little, people are returning. The environmental challenge is one of the big issues of the 21st century, and there are three main areas of concern. The biggest is global warming. According to Greenpeace, the rising temperature could reach 118.4 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. The consequences could be catastrophic. Renewable energy can be produced, but it's not easy because those in control of the fossil fuel industry aren't interested. In the world today, the renewable energy market requires about $285 billion a year. Only banks invest in combustible fossil fuels like carbon, oil and gas, 2.5 times this number. That's not good. We must change this situation. 
the scarcity of potable water would be one of the most serious consequences of global warming. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations warns that within five years, two-thirds of the world population could be living in water-stressed countries. The consequences would be catastrophic, as even the Pope has observed. L'acqua non è gratis, come tante volte pensiamo. Sarà il grave problema che può portarci a una guerra. The other major problem is the devastation of forests. In recent years, raging fires have ravaged Australia, Siberia, and California, among others. The Amazon forest, the so-called green lung of the earth, is under constant threat. The Amazon Synod from last October raised the alarm regarding indigenous communities, which are being threatened even as we speak. The Brazilian government is taking advantage of the pandemic to further their destruction. The oceans have been transformed into dumps, especially for plastic. According to Greenpeace, poor management of waste leaves approximately 8 million tons of plastic in the planet's seas and oceans annually. That makes up between 60 and 80 percent of the garbage in the ocean, and the consequences are unpredictable. Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si is celebrating its five-year anniversary and is kicking off a special year dedicated to it from May 2020 to May 2021. The goal, according to Tomas Insua with Global Catholic Climate Movement, is to raise awareness of the encyclical and turn it into action. It follows the See, Judge, Act structure of Catholic social teaching. So first, the first chapter of Laudato Si, it's about looking painful, becoming painfully aware of the crisis of our common home, the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor being so acute. Um, and just acknowledging and embracing the scientific consensus about the ecological crisis. It's a crisis, he says, that affects the poor in a profound way. Humanity currently and also future generations who have to live with the effects of today's actions. The second big point about Laudato Si is diving deeper into understanding what are the root causes of, our, of this crisis. Why did we get to this point that we're ravaging the very planet that sustains life? Laudato Si explains that humans have not followed the Genesis mandate to care for the common home as a gift from God. Instead, they have exploited it, using it for their own selfish benefit. Last but not least, it's about action. It's about once we see the problem, we understand the root causes, um, we turn into action and we engage in transformation. We need to transform across all levels of society, of the church, uh, of us individually and, commu and communally. This final part is the call to an ecological conversion, something John Paul II also spoke about in 2001. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis dives deeper into this idea, encouraging people to recognize the ecological problem, understand the causes, and transform not only their hearts, but the earth. From the Library of the Apostolic Palace, Pope Francis continued his catechesis on prayer, reflecting on the mystery of creation. He warned against the temptation of forgetting one's own significance amid the wonders of the universe. In questa sconfinata vastità, che cosa è l'uomo? Quasi un nulla, dice un altro salmo. Un essere che nasce, un essere che muore, una creatura fragilissima. Eppure, in tutto l'universo, l'essere umano è l'unica creatura consapevole di tanta profusione di bellezza. Pope Francis said the beauty of life can open the human heart to prayer. He said men and women who pray acknowledge that hope is stronger than discouragement. Se la vicenda della vita, con tutte le sue amarezze, rischia talvolta di soffocare in noi il dono della preghiera, Basta la contemplazione di un cielo stellato, di un tramonto, di un fiore, per riaccendere la scintilla del ringraziamento. Pope Francis said life is a gift from God, too short to waste it away in sadness. Et filius, et spiritus sancti.
For the first time since March 10th, there was life inside St. Peter's Square. Police cars circled the area as Italians, young and old, walked next to the fountains, which were once the only source of movement. We came because we want to rebegin to live in Rome, and this is a great way to start. Many museums are still closed, so although it's sad, we're taking advantage of this quiet time. The calmness of the square and the short line also inspired many Romans to go inside the basilica. We found ourselves here where there was hardly anyone. It was so weird. When we saw we could go inside the basilica, we went in. As a Roman, nothing like this has ever happened. I got to the square and I couldn't believe how empty it was. I passed by the Vatican every day since I lived nearby. It's always been full. But when I saw there was no line to go into the basilica, I had to go inside. Seeing it empty was something else altogether. In a certain sense, it's like seeing Rome for the first time. I live here, but it's completely different. Going into the basilica was magical, though, especially since it was empty. While many come to see the basilica, others just pass through. Italians are enjoying small freedoms like these that are returning during phase two of one of the strictest COVID-19 lockdowns in the world. After two months of shutdown because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the sanctuary of Our Lady of Lourdes in France has finally reopened. The reopening is accompanied by a number of security regulations and restrictions. For instance, wearing face masks on the premises is mandatory, and markings on the ground help maintain safe distances between visitors. For the time being, visits are limited to pilgrims who live near the sanctuary. Members of the religious communities of Lourdes will be guiding groups of no more than 10 pilgrims who want to visit the grotto. In the grotto, chaplains will continue their uninterrupted prayer. Pilgrims can also go to confession, a sacrament that has been out of reach for some time. One million plastic bottles are purchased every minute and 500 billion plastic bags each year. Eight million tons of plastic end up in the planet's oceans each year, threatening marine life. You are watching Rome Reports. Coming up after the break, we remember the Jesuits' former superior general, who led from 2008 to 2016. You are watching Rome Reports. After a prolonged illness, the former superior general of the Jesuits, Adolfo Nicolás, died in Tokyo. This is one of the last photos taken of him during the Pope's trip to Japan in November 2019. This is one of his signature gestures, seen as he greets his successor as leader of the Society of Jesus. In January 2008, he was elected superior general of the Jesuits. In 2016, upon turning 80, he resigned from the position so his diminishing strength wouldn't compromise the Jesuits' activities. Certainly, I cannot lead the society under years of personal decay. After the age of 80, you start that process of decay. I prefer to leave the job while I still retain my senses, and do not wait until Jesuits start asking themselves, this old man in Rome is still there? That is not very positive. You have to do things with a certain clarity, and it's better to start preparing things now. In a message circulated by the Society of Jesus, Arturo Sosa, the current superior of the Jesuits, remembers Adolfo Nicolás's complete dedication to God, his intense service, his calm availability, his courage, his sense of humor, and his humility. La memoria del padre Adolfo Nicolás. The memory of Father Adolfo Nicolás is a reason to reiterate our gratitude to the Lord for all the blessings he has given us. Among them is the gift of the life of our brother, Nico. He was a gift to the people of God and a light for those of us who want to serve God in the Society of Jesus. Adolfo Nicolás was born in Palencia, Spain in April 1936. He entered the Jesuit novitiate when he was 17 years old. He volunteered to go to Japan as a missionary, 
There, he was ordained a priest when he was 30 years old. He also spent 10 years in the Philippines. At 72 years of age, he was elected Superior General of the Jesuits, a role he carried out until 2016. During those years, he collaborated closely with Benedict XVI and later with Pope Francis. The current Superior General of the Jesuits met with the press in Rome to recall his predecessor, Aldolfo Nicolás, who died in Tokyo on May 20th. He remembered him as a person who wore himself out serving others. There are the pictures. Those who knew Father Nicolás when he was young and now see him at the time of his death see a deterioration of the person. It's not a coincidence. It's not just age. He was not so old either, but was a person who wore himself out because he put his whole being at the service of others. He certainly was a person who kept nothing for himself. With immense generosity, he gave everything. Aldolfo Nicolás and Arturo Sosa have known each other since 1995 and have worked closely since 2008. In 2014, he moved from Venezuela to Rome to work together. For 25 years, we've been very, very close. I can certainly say that Father Nicolás is one of my teachers. The meeting with journalists happened in the same place as this gesture of loyalty. Aldolfo Nicolás hugged his successor as a sign of respect. He was very excited because it was a very important moment in his life. I was still very stunned. It really was a heartfelt hug. I think he felt that he was unloading, but he was calm because the congregation had made a decision that left him like that. Adolfo Nicolás was the 29th successor of St. Ignatius of Loyola. He led the Society of Jesus from 2008 to 2016. Although it is a life position, he resigned when he noticed he was getting weaker, so as not to stop the work of the Jesuits. The elderly are one of the populations most impacted by the coronavirus. They were perhaps the first to isolate themselves to care for their health. For many, isolation has evolved into desperate loneliness. The elderly are those who most suffer. In Europe, we could say they suffer from the sickness of solitude. Those who live in nursing homes feel especially abandoned. They are the ones who suffer most from this loneliness. In response to this drama, Giovanni per la Pace, Youth for Peace, launched the Hashtag Save Our Elderly initiative. The goal is to accompany, from a distance, seniors who feel alone. The seniors I talk to these days tell me they're alright, but that they feel more lonely. Contacting them through video calls makes them feel less alone. He's a Roman, and he makes me laugh every time we talk. We usually talk about simple things. I tell him I'm cooking pasta with eggplant, and he gives me cooking tips. You have to slice them like this. At the end of a long day, they say they don't really know who is helping whom. These young people have become the voice of the elderly, who risk their lives and suffer without being heard. These young people are sending them all a message. It's a message for the future of our country and of each one of us. The campaign can be followed in other countries through the Sant'Egidio website. To raise awareness, they invite people to join by going to giovaniperlapace.it. Which country offers the most opportunities for children? Mexico, Norway, Japan. You are watching Rome Reports. Which country offers the most opportunities for children? Mexico, Norway, Japan. The correct answer is B. Norway offers the most opportunities for growth and success. You are watching Rome Reports.
While coronavirus numbers are being counted around the world, Joe Kim, Joanna Hernandez, and Mike Del Ponte also wanted to track something else, prayer. To do this, they began the Map of Hope. It shows where the rosary is being prayed and even allows intentions to be posted. So we created the Map of Hope so that people could come to the website, get a sense of hope in the sense that other people are praying for them, a sense of community around the world, a deeper devotion to the rosary, and ultimately using prayer to end the pandemic. The site has formed its own prayer network as a result. In a matter of weeks, there are 9,000 prayer requests posted from 130 countries. Examples of miracles from the rosary are also shown, like the end of a plague in Italy in the 15th century. The rosary is necessary at this time because it's a powerful prayer that we can all do anywhere. You could do it alone, you could do it in community. All you need is your rosary beads, and even if you don't have a rosary, you can use your fingers to count. But it's important because at this time when a lot of people can't go to Mass, there's still a way to do something that is ancient and significant and carries many miracles attributed to it. Mike insists the Map of Hope also answers Pope Francis's call to pray the Rosary, especially in the month of May. Ho invitato tutti i fedeli a pregare in questo mese il Santo Rosario, insieme, in famiglia o soli. Well, right now, the map on their website only shows the United States. In a couple of weeks, they are expanding it to a global map. They look forward to receiving intentions in various languages and seeing the rosary being prayed around the world, all for the end of the coronavirus. Notre Dame's Folk Choir released their new album of sacred music, Catch the Spirit. It explores African-American and East African traditions with a mix of gospel, jazz, and spirituals. The choir's director, J.J. Wright, explained how this album is a sign of encounter. This experience has really allowed us to enter really deeply um, into this experience of encounter that Pope Francis talks about. Uh, we don't want to merely be looking from the outside in, but we want to walk next to uh, those with whom we minister and with those who minister to us. Choir members engaged with African Americans in the States and took a semester-long course to dive deeper into African culture. Expert guides also taught choir members word pronunciation and melodies for songs in Swahili or other East African dialects. They even went a step further, traveling to Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania to understand the culture even better. While we were there, we shared um, and some really great food, some great songs, dance, conversations, really great experiences while we were on our pilgrimage in East Africa. And what we hope to bring back was um, be able to share our experience with seeing God not only in the new place, but also God in this new music that we were bringing back um, that we had experienced. The music is full of energy and excitement. And when singing or listening, you can't help but catch the spirit of zeal as we celebrate Christ. During the two-year period it took to make the album, members say the music was able to transform them, even though it wasn't part of their culture. I think that the diversity in the music that we were learning, as far as being from the African-American culture and the East African culture, uh, it really helped me personally deepen my faith and stretch my faith and see how other people are practicing their faith, especially in the context of music, because um, African American music, there's, a, there's some call and response, there's a lot of movement, um, you know, hand clapping, but also singing that's not necessarily written on the page. It kind of comes from the soul. Catch the Spirit was originally planned to be released at the end of May. However, with the pandemic, they pushed it up to April 17th and postponed their U.S. tour, which was to coincide with the release. It's available on Spotify, Apple Music, and all major platforms.
After a little over two months of confinement, Italy is slowly returning to its normal activities. Its cultural wealth makes it one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. That's why museums were among the first sites to reopen their doors. This includes the Capitoline Museums in Rome. The museums are completely open, except for the smallest galleries. There, only two people are allowed at a time, in order to maintain a minimum safety distance of three feet between visitors. Nevertheless, the tour is complete. Guests can see the Capitoline Pinacoteca, the Capitoline Venus, and even Rubens, Romulus and Remus. Then they can get a view of the Roman Forum from the Tabellarium. Now, access to one of Italy's most important museums is very different from three months ago. Visits must be booked online ahead of time. Upon arrival, visitors must have their temperature taken. After going through security, they are required to use hand sanitizer and wear masks and gloves. In addition, they have to follow the arrows on the floor, all while keeping at least three feet between themselves and others. The galleries were carefully sanitized by professionals specialized in preserving historical works of art. Now, one of the treasures of the Eternal City is accessible once more. It's the sculpture of the Capitoline she-wolf, who, according to tradition, raised Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. Tourists can also gaze upon the imposing bronze sculpture of Marcus Aurelius from 176 AD. Every year, millions of tourists visit these sites, which preserve the artistic roots of Western culture. Foreign tourists won't be able to visit before June 3rd, when Italy is set to reopen its borders to the European Union, without tourists being obligated to spend time in quarantine. In our next program, we take you inside the Vatican Museums as they reopen after the lockdown. This and much more here on Rome Reports. Should I try to use my mind to figure everything out, or should I simply rely on faith to understand? See, those who rely on faith alone to view the world are not using their minds to reason. And those who only rely on reason to interpret reality are turning their backs on the gift of faith. Well, the perfect solution involves a marriage of both faith and reason. See, God knew that we would be full of questions, big questions, as large as our universe. And God created us with intellects to wonder, dream, and philosophize. Yet God asks us to believe in some truths that we can't see with our eyes. We can arrive at perfect truth when we choose to see with the eyes of faith while we reason with our minds. And our faith can truly blossom when we explore it with our mind. Maybe St. Augustine said it best, I believe in order to understand, and I understand in order to believe. Live truth. Live Catholic. For over 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has consistently transformed through sacred scriptures and sacred tradition. It is comforting to know that some things remain consistent. Live truth. Live Catholic. Visit our shop at Shiashi, opposite Gethsemane Cemetery, and find for yourselves the following Monstrance, Chalice, Candles, Clerical Sheds, Bibles, Writings of the Early Church Fathers, and other sacramentals. For more information, contact Live Truth, Live Catholic Bookshop on 020 222. 0376 or 024 960 Live truth, live Catholic, your, your number, number one stop shop, shop for your religious, religious items. Rome Report comes to you from the Department of Social Communications, Catholic Archdiocese of Accra, this and every Sunday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. on GTV.